going on today guys early morning sunday morning uh today i want to work on my 55 chevy i just got this brand new camera it's not just a gopro but it's another one so we'll see how it works uh unfortunately the challenger is dead in the garage so we're gonna work on this thing in between a couple of hot rods so i've had a bunch of new subscribers lately i don't think i've worked in this thing since this is actually the car I started the YouTube channel on uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, maybe. It's pretty uh, pretty amateur videos. I only did like one a week or something like that. More than anything, I was just documenting it for myself. This was my first four-door to two-door conversion. Uh, obviously, it's got a bit of a two-lane blacktop vibe to it. Uh, it was ratty when I first got it. Uh, this one I did proper. I actually have a two-door parts car. So the... Uh, the whole post and everything wow is it dirty i also can't find the keys so that's a whole other issue oh nice that is embarrassing but uh anyways so i did this one with a two-door so the, the rear windows it's actual glass and they actually go up and down stuff uh i radius the wheel wells i didn't raise them enough i'm fighting off i should do a bigger radius this year so i can put a, a meteor tire on and uh, move the leaf springs in do a few things make it more of a race car but uh whatever when i first built it i said a junk 44 in it and a turbo 400 and over the winter i had a motor built for it and a, and a transmission if you go back you can see all the dilemmas i've had and anyways put the transmission in it was screwing around i changed it a few times and then i got the motor in that was fine and now what it does is under uh acceleration and braking it drops oil pressure for some reason and under like at like 6500 rpm it runs at oil pressure too uh so i'm gonna do oil pump and pickup see if that's it see if there's something unhappy in there maybe it's too close to the pan i don't know so i'm hoping i can just drop the steering maybe and pull the pan out uh with the motor in the car still fingers crossed i did that on that red 57 with small block chevy so I'm hoping I'll have the same. Otherwise, it's a cool little hot rod, glass front end, the whole deal. I like it. Oh, you know what? I probably robbed the battery out of this thing. That's probably why their keys are in the trunk. And that was a while ago. Gentle. Oh, well, it's a two-hand job, I guess. But, uh, probably forget them there again. I've got to put a battery in it. I'll fire it up. So like I said, it runs and drives fine just under uh, heavy load or, or braking acceleration it runs at oil pressure for some reason so that's not that's not great for the motor right so i'm gonna wing this thing around put it up on stands actually first i'm gonna have some breakfast but then i'm gonna do that because now i realize there's probably no battery in this thing it's a bunch more screwed around than i originally thought but yeah that's what we're gonna work on today and hopefully fix it or make it the exact same well it's many many hours later i've been kind of messing around in the garage a little bit work on these stupid pistons which will probably be in another video uh anyways so i got the 55 up on stands uh you have to pull the steering down that's why the wheels are all right to get the oil pan out which you actually can get the pan out which is nice uh on these tri fives at least i've lucked out on both these cars uh so good news bad news uh, the bad news was I'm an idiot, but the good news is it's easy to fix. The pickup fell out of the oil pump. And as you guys know, that's kind of an important piece. Oh, gentle. So, right in this area, let me put the light on. We'll go full, uh, full Hollywood. Look at that, what do you think? Like that. Uh, yeah, it's missing the, uh, little tulip boop, that goes down. Uh... It looks like I JB welded it, maybe? I don't know. I guess I probably shouldn't put that in the pan. Um, so, yeah, it looks new. It looks happy. I think I'll probably pull the pan out. I'll grind that or chip that off. I'll see where it kind of wanted to be. I'll mark it. And then I'll just put a couple of tack welds on it. That's why you should always tack weld these on. I should be able to, well, yeah, I'll mark it, pull it off tack weld on the bench and put her all back together but yeah so that's good other than me being stupid it's great so i'll take this apart and uh we'll put her back together and see what happens uh 
So, I actually ended up, I found another oil pump I had in stock, which you never know uh, when you're going to need that, right? But anyways, you know, I don't know. I can't, this looks new. I can't imagine something I did because it's not even pushed in all the way. And I mean, typically what you do is you knock it, you know, in as much as you can. You put like a wrench or something around it, push it in, and then you put a couple of tack bolts on it, which I just can't imagine I would do this with JB Weld and stuff, considering I have a welder. So I just marked this one where it was, because this was good in that pan with that motor. So I know it worked, other than it's just spangled. So this must have been in that motor, I gotta think. So this is a brand new one. I'm gonna put it together, match it. I'm gonna weld it and put it all back together. And hopefully my problems are fixed. And if I did that, pretty embarrassed. Uh, okay, so there you go, it's in. Guaranteed there's a proper tool for this that I don't know one. So I put a three quarter wrench and then I smash it with a hammer until it seats itself. And I mean, it's, it's not going anywhere. Like it's a press fit, it's snug, but now just kind of lay a few tack welds instead of uh, JB weld and should be good. You know, this pump is probably fine. So I'll keep it just in case I need it. But man, that's embarrassing. Like even if I didn't do that, I just can't believe it. I mean, I, I, my eyes closed when I was putting that motor together. I guess that's what happens when you thrash and uh, I think I did all that in two days, motor trans and everything. But uh, put this in. I don't think this is a high volume one, but... Uh, a bunch of people are saying in the comments, and I, and I tend to agree because I, I shortened that, like, well, I cut that pan up. I don't want to suck it dry, and I mean, really, it's not an absolute race car, so this will probably be just fine. So I'll buzz a couple of tacks on there, and then slap this sucker back together. All right, well, I got her down on the ground, oil in, hooked up all the lights, has oil pressure. Oh, I hope I didn't smash the. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> Man, I gotta start thinking things through. Uh, it runs, smokes a little bit because I got some oil spilled and stuff. Just gonna adjust the alternator belt because it squeals. Check the oil level. Uh, actually, a cruise tonight. Maybe we'll go for a little ride. Hopefully, we can get a little bit of footage. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Daniel's got Lenny, so that's a nightmare. So we might keep going. Otherwise, maybe we'll take this thing for a proper drive tomorrow. Drone it because I love droning. Well, Danielle loves it. This would be a cool drone car. Mm -hmm. We haven't drove this one yet, actually. Well, it hasn't run. And I need the insurance papers on this thing. Oh. But I'll double check that. Yeah, see what happens. Wish us luck. Well, it's the next day. Uh, we didn't do any filming last night. Uh, we had the dog and, and stuff like that. Went to a little car show. It was good. Uh, probably put, let's say, 50 miles on the old hot rod. Didn't overheat. Had good oil pressure. It definitely sounds like it's got an exhaust leak or something. It's clickety-clackety. And you can really smell it in the cab. But, uh, also, I haven't cleaned this thing in, I don't know how long, so I'm thinking, uh, I'll get a little vacuum, a little, little wipe down. I'm not going to wash the outside, obviously, that kind of kills the point. Flip the head forward, there's oil and crap everywhere, and, you know, for the exhaust, I'm going to start by, uh, just obviously double-checking the headers to the head and the collectors and stuff. But I actually think what it is, I think it's on this side, you hear it clickety-clackety. Uh, the fender well headers, when I had them off, the front suspension had whacked in them a few times. Something I just have a hole in one of the pipes and stuff like that. So if I can find it, I'll just give it a quick buzz with the welder. Otherwise, maybe it's just a gasket. We'll see what happens. But uh, do that. Clean it all up. Uh, maybe I'll do another oil change on it. We'll just see. Wanted to figure out the wiring a little bit to the front end, make sure it's all good. Go take it for a drive in the daylight. And yeah, maybe drone it. Danny loves droning and it works good for me. So that's what we're doing. Stay tuned. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, I guess how you look at it, all the header bolts are tight. Uh, I just see one little kind of soot mark there. So I'll double check those tight. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to try and figure This is the header I really, really, uh, effed up but you can see here where the control arm hopefully it'll show up can't see in the camera it's all wore out and it's actually bashed into the header and i'm thinking that's probably not great 
So I'll have to kind of maybe go around and uh, just see, because I really, I did a lot to these things, I had to weld them in. There could just be little pinholes and stuff, I'm thinking. And actually this being all, yeah. I don't know, I'll have to see. That's a bummer, I was hoping it'd be something easy. Never is. Uh, I'm gonna clean up under the hood here, wipe everything down, stuff like that. Double check for leaks, I don't think I have any, but you never know. And uh, it's probably time to just be pressure washed and stuff like that, because it's all gungy from sitting around. So I'll do that real quick, shine her up, fire it up, let it all kind of heat off, and we'll go from there. Then, yeah, back to the inside out, give it a once over. Well, see what happens when we go for a little cruise. I'm stoked on this thing. Well, there we go, all shined up. I wiped down the valve covers, because let's be honest, that's the only part that really matters. It's a nice painted motor. Uh, I keep forgetting, I mean, I, I guess I got a lot of new subscribers here now, so I appreciate every one of you. So this 55, it was a four door, like I said, to a two door. Uh, this motor I just put in this year, Motor and Trans. If you go back a few videos, maybe I'll put a link in the description or, or something like that, but I had just a bone stock motor and trans in it, and I paid up, had a motor built, and it took kind of forever. And then I had transmission, I went, you know, brand new, uh, Turbo 400, high stall, shift kit, the whole deal. I put it all together, I broke the cam in, everything was good. <coughs> so this motor here is, uh, you know, 10 to 1, kind of gone through high protected pistons. It's got uh, world product heads on it, it's got fancy valve train, uh, you know, two Hollies on the tunnel ram, obviously, fender wall headers. Nothing crazy, but definitely a good, uh, fun little streetable motor. Uh, so I broke the cam in, everything was good. Turbo 400, didn't have high gear, screw around with that for way too long, and then eventually just got another one, the guy rebuilt another one, swapped it, put it back in, now I had high gear, I was stoked, and then I had an oil pressure issue, which then obviously you saw that I fixed, because the pickup fell off. So that's kind of the story of this thing, just a fun driver, I did a pile of metal work to it, the floors, uh, quarters, obviously the whole door section and all that. The doors were fixed, rockers, did the trunk floor, did all around the taillights. The only thing I didn't touch on this was the roof and the deck lid. Glass front end, uh, you know, I stripped the whole thing. It's all brand new front end. So it's not a complete gasser with a straight axle, but I got uh, big block Chevelle coils in there, so it sits high. It's a cool little hot rod. I love it. Anyways, the one thing I cheaped out on, well, I didn't cheap out, I got lazy. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, well, the two things, the headers was one. Uh, I put a Speedway wiring harness on this thing, so it's got brand new wiring front to back. That's a lot of new parts on this thing. Anyways, uh, so I ran all the wires to the front, and it was fine, but then when I took the front clip off to the motor swap, I just shook, cut it all. And then last night, I wanted to drive it, so I got lazy and just put the cheapest butt connectors I had to make it work. Anyways, shameless plug wire care. They sent me a cool kit of these Deutsch, Dutch, Deutsch, Deutsch connectors. Never used them before, but uh, I just watched their YouTube video and my good buddy Steve just told me how to use them. Oh, it looks like this is falling out. Uh, anyways, so I'm gonna do that. So I'll have a waterproof connector. So now next time I can just unclip that and take the whole front, uh, front end off with just, uh, I it's four bolts and this little uh, aircraft cable I have holding together. So we'll do that real quick. It should be fun, it looks pretty simple. Uh, famous last words, but uh, we'll see. I feel like all you're getting is boob right now. Boob and brows, baby. Give the internet <laughs> what they want. Uh, brief intermission, we're going to take out Danielle's eyebrow ring. <laughs> you sure you can't just get it by hand? I tried. Do they both ends spin or just one I side? think both spin, I'd assume. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my I gotta god. eat both. I'm very nervous. 
<laughs> are they clean? Of course they're clean. <laughs> Is it going? Yep. I got the top half. Oh, you look like a unicorn now. Okay, face the camera and take it out. <laughs> I got the top ball loose. So do I just... Oh, wow, look! Oh, God, that was gross. Oh, you're no. like a sideshow freak. Oh, my gosh! Why would you say that? All right, back to hot rods. <laughs> All right, well, back at her here. So... This little connection, we'll call it. This is all my junk that I did in wire care. They sent me uh, a bunch of stuff out. I was going to use it on the 57, but uh, since we're working on the 55, we we'll use it. So there's these Deutsch, De Deutsch, Deutsch, whatever connectors. So they're waterproof and super fancy. So I figure I'll put one of those in there instead of my 99 cent buck connectors from Canadian Tire. And then I'll be waterproof and good to go. So, should be pretty simple. They gave me also these sweet uh, wire strippers. They were on Finnegan's channel, so you know they gotta be good, right? But I'll trim these, I guess. And yeah, I guess we'll just see what happens. Okay, so I stripped all these wires, which is super easy. I got one little practice connector. This. This wire stripper is so handy. It's got a little stop on it. You just put it in. And it's done. Just that easy. You can adjust it whatever you want. This is a... That's a pretty trick little tool. And then these are little connectors. So they just fit in this little machine. Or whatever. Crimper, I guess it's called. Oops. Twist your wire like you would everything else. You put her in the little connector. Squeeze till it lets go. And there you go. Just that easy. So, I'll do that a few more times. Put these out of the way. And then you just jam in that little connector and should be good. Okay, well, so I got these all crimped, and now I'm just kind of feeding into this fancy connector. It looks unbelievably easy. You just kind of push it through until you hear a little click, and they're locked in at the top. So, I don't know. I don't think there's any really rhyme or reason to the order these go in. Obviously, on the other side, you'll have to make it uh, match. Well, I guess only if you want it to work properly. So there you go. Now, there is a little uh, plastic piece that locks in there. I'll have to go get that. But I'm going to pin this side first. So I'll just show you real quick. This thing works so fast. So I'll just show you that, then I'll terminate them real quick, and then I'll bring you back and we'll uh, hopefully just connect these things together. This is this is a good tool right here, you guys. I don't know about you, but I spent my life stripping wire and it's always a nightmare. Well. Okay. Both connectors are done. Uh, obviously, just make sure the wires correspond to wherever it is. And there's just these little, uh, I guess, separators, wherever, just to hold the the pins. So pretty easy. That pops in. This one pops in here. It actually holds this little waterproof O-ring on. That's it. They only fit one way. 
and we're deutscht. Wow, looks pretty good. I'll just trim up this little bit of looming I got. I'll be quick. Uh, I was going to do this on its own because it's kind of heavy gauge and it actually is too big for uh, these connectors. Also, I just I added that in. That's pretty uh, That's pretty chintz. When I had the hood closed, I actually pinched the wire and, and broke it. So I got to get some more big black wiring. Uh, but yeah, that's slick. So I'll just tape that up. We'll be done. All right, got this thing all shined up. Got the air filters on. I cleaned the glass. That's all I ever clean this thing is the glass, so that's all that matters. The more dirty the outside is, the better it looks. And hey, give me an attitude about the door squeak. So I'm gonna leave a comment. Uh, I'm back to the inside. See this when I, this is the first time I did a one piece carpet in a Tri-5. And I did this car in the middle of winter, so I couldn't let it, uh, whatever, kind of settle in the sun. So it's all bunched up and whatnot, so. That's where your car is way better. It's real bad in the center. Holy moly. But whatever. It's good. It's extremely hot. So we're going to go for a little cruise in a little bit and uh, do a little bit of droning. We'll probably wait till the sun starts to go down or something like that. But uh, let me know what you think about this uh, 55 Chevy. You want to see more of it or you kind of done with it? What do you want to do with it? I don't know. Go beat on it until it breaks. Uh, I'm missing. I broke a stud on the other side there so i ordered a set of those so i don't want to go too crazy until i get that all sorted out and as you guys all know these rear ends are fragile like glass so i'm sure that's what i'll be replacing next but yeah cool car i really like this thing but we'll be back out a little later go a little cruise around little action shots huh eh? see how she goes all right got the hot rod warming up we're gonna go for a little uh we'll drive in this thing Danny wants some droning sun's going down it's cooled off a little bit and I want to put some miles on this sucker